Right now, the solar energy system on my home is producing more energy than the house is using, and the excess energy is being sent back to the grid. Thus, my utility meter is spinning backwards, or this little arrow is pointing in this direction. The extra energy that gets sent back to the grid has a value, and how much credit I get for the energy I sell back is what the net metering program is all about. So let's head into the home energy classroom. We discuss this in detail, how it works and how much credit you get for the energy you sell back to the grid. So welcome back to the home energy classroom where we are gonna discuss net metering. And net metering really is how you get credit for the extra energy you sell back to the utility. Net metering is also known as net energy metering and goes by the acronym frequently NEM. Okay, so let's dive into the details of how net metering works and we're going to compare it to how standard metering works. So standard metering is very simple. You're using energy from the electric grid and you're accruing debits or an energy bill that you owe the utility. Now with net metering the equation changes because you have solar on the roof. Now when the solar's not working, when the sun's not shining, you're still using energy from the grid and you're accruing those debits. But when the sun comes out, what happens? Well, the solar energy starts producing energy and powers your home first. Notice your bill is not going down or up because this house is in a neutral state. All of its energy needs are being provided from the solar system. Now, once the house's needs are met, extra energy starts to get sent back from the grid and the meter spins backwards. And that backward spinning of the meter starts to reduce the debits, the amount you owe the utility, and eventually it can create credits for your utility bill or your net metering statement. Now, let's take a look again. At nighttime, the sun goes down, of course, and you stop producing solar energy and you start using energy from the grid again. Now those credits can be kind of used to offset the energy used from the grid. And if we take a look at this on a kind of daily basis, hour by hour basis, you can see the lines in gray represent hourly energy usage and the lines in yellow represent solar power. So how much solar energy is being produced every hour. And you'll notice there are some hours where you're using more energy from the grid than you are from solar. And there's some hours where you're producing more solar energy than your house is using. So the solar energy that's produced starts by offsetting replacing the energy you would have used from the grid because you're directly running your house off solar, thus eliminating that amount of energy usage. So everything in red is still energy that you're using from the grid. Everything in yellow is energy that you would have used from the grid, but now you're using from solar. And everything below the line in green is energy that you exported or sold back to the grid. And so this is how we kind of look at a daily basis. We look at the energy that we bought from the grid, the imports, and the energy we sold to the grid, the exports also known as the credits. And so this is, you know, energy usage in red and energy credits in green. And so what really is the most important part of net energy metering? It is the value for the export credits that you get. And so we're going to look at California as a really good example because the value of our net energy metering credits have changed very drastically over the last few years. Now net energy metering in California is actually called the solar billing plan. And so if we look at a typical utility rate structure in California, what you'll see is that during different times of day, there's different costs for energy. And under net metering 1.0 or net metering 2.0, the value we were getting for energy that we we're exporting was based on the cost for energy during the period in which we were exporting. So for example, in the months where we weren't in March or April, typically in the middle of the daytime, the value for the energy we'd export was valued at about 45 cents. I'll show you that again, right? During the exports, we got 45 cents per kilowatt hour for our credits that we'd accrue on our net metering statement. Okay. so. In March and April, it was a little bit different, right? In March and April, for example, we'd only get 36 cents. Why? Because in March and April, the value again for the energy that we we're exporting was the same as what we were paying for the grid, which was 36 cents. But something started happening in California, which was the grid started to get more and more saturated with solar. 
If you look at 2015 in the middle of the daytime, we had reasonable demand, but as more and more solar systems came online, the supply increased so much that the value for the energy we sold back to the grid actually became negative as a wholesale value. This is negative $6 per megawatt hour. Why? It's a simple supply and demand curve. Lots of supply, not as much demand in relationship to that supply. And so net metering 3.0 or the solar billing plan changed the way we get value for exports. And now it's based on what's called a utility avoided cost calculator. And that avoided cost calculator takes a look at what are the wholesale values for energy that's sold back, meaning what are the wholesale values that can be offset that utilities don't have to buy from a generation power plant when a homeowner can kind of provide that extra energy to the grid. And so solar billing or the net metering plan no longer gives you the full retail value of 36 cents or 45 cents, depending on the time of year. They now provide a value based on the avoided cost calculator, which most of the time in the day is one cent per kilowatt hour. So take a look at this graph again. What this means is you're paying for energy from the grid in red for th at 36 cents per kilowatt hour, sometimes at you know 45 cents per kilowatt hour, sometimes at 69 cents per kilowatt hour, and you're selling energy not for that 36 cents, but only about one cent per kilowatt hour, right? So your credit value in relationship to the cost of energy has gone way, way down. And that's probably a trend we're gonna see in more and more utilities across the country. Not something I'm voting for, but just based on the way we've seen it play out in California, I would not be surprised if the value for extra energy exported goes down. And a lot of people get annoyed by this. You know, they get angry, they say this isn't fair. They worry about whether solar's financials are actually gonna work and they get resigned and ultimately get stopped to do anything. But here you are, you're getting educated. Where you, after you get educated, you can kind of get creative and strategic about your solutions and ultimately get in action because there are technologies and solutions to address this and it's very simple. Solar today and for the future really has its own kind of flexibility of value in terms of the energy you produce when you add a battery to the equation. So let's see how that changes the whole equation. Sun comes up. Same thing, the solar energy feeds power to the home. And then instead of selling energy back to the grid at one cent, no, 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 we're gonna send the extra solar energy into the battery. That battery will fill up, it'll hold that energy. Once that battery is full, the extra solar energy then does get exported. Maybe we do get a penny, maybe we get a little bit more and spin that meter backwards. And then when the sun comes down, instead of buying energy from the utility for 69 cents, we start using our own stored energy from our battery that we put into the battery earlier that day. And then if the battery runs out, of course, we can pull energy from the grid. And so what happens here is we basically take these extra exports that we were getting very low value for, and we fill up the battery with them, and then we discharge the battery to cover or replace energy we would have bought from the utility, reducing our imports. And if the battery's large enough and the solar system's large enough, you can almost effectively reduce the, your entire imports. There are still some basic grid connection costs in California and in most states. And you know we'll see how all of those details play out. But in general, you have the opportunity to eliminate most of the energy you're gonna use with solar and storage. And so that's the goal, to get to very, very low imports so you're fundamentally self-sufficient and have the energy freedom to produce your own power, store it, and use it when you choose. If you love this video on net energy metering, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm coming out with a ton of additional content. And if you just wanna learn more right now, Almost all of my content is hosted for free on the San Diego Learn platform. You can follow this QR code or find the link below to get access to all this free content. And we're gonna be releasing a ton of new home energy checklists that give you free information about exactly what to verify before you make a decision on key home energy projects. Thanks so much for joining me for this video and I'll see you very soon.